Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today I've got a couple of silicone Apple watch bands I need to do, and I'm going to do it ad hoc, meaning I'm not going to set up a jig or anything. I'm just going to put these on the bed of the laser, drop my graphics in to light burn, show you a couple of tips and tricks on what I use in light burn to make this kind of stuff really easy. Check it out. Okay, so how I approach this is I'll go ahead and put both of, both pieces of my watch band uh, down on the honeycomb. I use just regular honeycomb pins to hold these straps down. I line up the edge of the watch band with the top parts of these honeycomb. This particular uh, honeycomb is square to the gantry, so um, I know when I'm lining it up here, it's going to look uh, lined up uh, when we turn on the light burn camera. Uh, I use these holes as center line for the watch band on this side, but we don't have a reference for center on the other side of the on the other piece of the watch band. Uh, this is about 0.82 inches wide, so I just mark it at 0.41 inches wide, and um, you'll see how I use this center point. Uh, there's a feature in Lightburn that I don't see talked about very often that's really handy. And so what I'll do is I'll show you how I make sure that both of my uh, graphics are lined up on the watch bands. Um, and we'll go to Lightburn next. Okay, so here we got Lightburn. I'm going to assume that your camera on your laser is up and functioning. And so we're just going to want to make sure that our uh, laptop is connected to our laser. We're going to come down here, make sure we've got that communicating. We're good there. We come up here, select our light burn camera. It's going to should show you a live feed here. And so before I actually um, go any further with the light burn camera itself, I'm going to go ahead and import the graphics that we need for our watch band. And in my case, I've got um, an art library. And so we can just go ahead and drop those in. I can go ahead and ungroup them. And then I'm going to select the watch bands and delete, because I don't need those. <clears throat> the actual watch band on the camera is going to show you what you need. I'm going to go ahead and rotate these. And how I rotated them, I used the period key instead of rotating it up here. It's a lot easier if I just uh, tap the period key. Um, it'll, it'll rotate your graphics. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to separate these because I want to move them independently. So I'm going to make sure that that one is grouped. And this one is grouped. I just uh, got this uh, pattern off of Etsy. There's lots of them, lots of lots to choose from there. I certainly didn't create this. Okay, so now that we've got our graphics ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and fire up uh, and update the overlay and place these graphics on the watch bands. Okay, so now that I've got my graphics in, what I'm going to go ahead and do is come up here to update overlay. And you can see my graphics are over here back out here. And so what I've got to do now is I've got to place each one of these graphics on these watch bands. Because they're grouped, I can come over here and grab this one and place it over here. And this black dot right here is the center of your design. So usually I try to center that up on the, uh, on the watch band as best I can. something like that. And then I'll come over here and grab this other graphic and put it on this other one. And again, the reason why I put that little black dot there is so I can take this little black dot and match it up with that black dot and know that it's going to be pretty close. Now, the placement of this particular uh, design on this watch band is kind of personal preference. Um, I don't want to put it right here because I think it's the part of the design is too close to the watch head. 
So I'm going to move this down a little bit, but I am still going to keep it centered on the watch band itself, like right about there. Okay. So now I've got that's I mean that's all it takes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, verify uh, with a command that you see up here under the arrange tool called move uh, laser to selection. And I'm going to move the laser to the to a selection center. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this particular graphic. And I'm going to come up here to arrange, move laser to selection, and move laser to selection center. Now, if, I, if I've got everything lined up right and my camera's calibrated, when I make this selection, it's going to move the head of that laser to right in the middle where these strap holes are. And that way I know um, I'm good to go. Okay, so now I know that uh, my design that's illustrated with the light burn camera is right on the money. If for some reason that's off, it's typically because you've got to calibrate your camera. Do I have to calibrate my camera? Yeah, once in a while I've got to run it through the calibration process, but it really only takes two or three minutes and it's well worth it. Okay, so uh, this graphic's right on the money. The pointer showed up right there, so I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to select this graphic and I'm going to come up here to arrange move laser to center of selection and it's going to move that laser head from here over to where about where I got that black dot located. This is why it's important to have this uh, cut selected graphics uh, radio button on so I can pick uh, my different graphics and have it do things independently. Okay, so that confirms that my the, the uh, design is centered on that second uh, watch band and we're ready to go ahead and fire up the laser. Okay, now that I've confirmed that what I see on the light burn camera layout is truly what's uh, going to happen in the bed of the laser, I'm ready to go. But before I do that, I'm just going to double check these settings. Um, this is for my particular laser. Again, this is a Thunder uh, Nova 24 60 watt, um, 300 millimeters per second, 25% power, no air assist. And this is going to be a fill. And we're going to need to change this to 799. Um, I found that uh, going with a, a real high lines per inch makes these um, silicone engravings a lot cleaner. The other thing that I do is I take my laser out of focus quite a ways. I normally focus my laser at about 6 millimeters. And I normally uh, focus my laser head at about uh, 8 to 9 millimeters uh, for these watch bands. And so it looks like we're fill 325. We are good to go. So now we've got them off the laser, I'm going to take them over, take a little soap and water with a uh, stiff bristle toothbrush and uh, shine them up and they'll be great. Well as you can see, if you've got a light burn camera on your laser, it's quick and easy. In reality it takes me maybe two or three minutes to set up watch bands, another six to seven minutes to engrave them. Uh, another minute or two to clean them up. It's quick and easy. And once you know your light burn camera is calibrated, 
If I had a number of different watch bands to do, um, I could take these out, put the others in, drag the, uh, uh, the uh, artwork over, and engrave them in no time flat. So just a fun project uh, for you to do with your light burn camera. I hope you enjoyed the information. As always, if you'd like and subscribe, I'd sure appreciate it. Have a great day.